You suck at people remembering you because you're terrible at this. Get people to remember you by mastering your body language. Not only mastering your body language, but learning how to make a good first impression. You got three seconds to make a first impression. They say seven is three now. We've been conditioned to move quicker in today's society, right? Even on social media, like as a content creator, you got three seconds to hook somebody to make them want to watch your video. It's the same in real life. So how do you do that, right? How do you make a lasting impression? Well, first off, like I said, it's about body language. It's about how you carry yourself, how you move. Do people notice you when you walk into a room? Do you get that feeling like, man, they staring at me? Or do you walk in the room and shit just keep going? How you move, I can't stress this enough, right? How you move determines how people treat you. If you open your mouth and people got to struggle to hear you, immediately wrote off. I don't want to hear nothing else you got to say. Nothing. Because if I got to struggle to hear you, that means what you're saying ain't important, right? So you have to learn how to move with confidence. Like I said in the, in, in the flirting, confidence is key. You got to build your confidence. If your confidence is in the trash, first off, you got to realize your confidence is in the trash. If you're walking... And people telling you to sit up straight. If you walking and they're telling you to sit up straight. This is live, y'all. But if you walking and they're telling you you got a hump in your back. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it. You know, life beats us down sometimes. And it, it'll, it'll weigh on you. That's why people slouch. Because life is heavy than a motherfucker. It's weighing on them, right? But you have to realize that. Because sometimes we could be move, operating in low self-esteem and we don't even know we have low self-esteem we wondering why we're attracting these type of people we're wondering why certain situations is always happening like you getting looked over for promotions at work things you could do to build your confidence back up is how you move how you carry yourself if you're always slouching you're always gonna feel bad when i was a kid i used to watch winnie the pooh right Y'all, some of y'all might know where I'm going with this. Who was the person or or the figure in Winnie the Pooh that had the worst self esteem, worst confidence? Eeyore, right? Hey, piglet. You know, that's how some of y'all operate out here in these streets, and y'all don't even know it, right? So, if you want to see how other people see you, just record yourself. Everybody got a phone. Everybody got a phone. Record yourself. Record how you walk. Record how you talk. Would you watch yourself? If you don't want to watch yourself, what makes you think other people want to watch you, right? You have to get confident. That's the only way. People are attracted to people with confidence. Because a lot of people don't have confidence. There's a lot of people that aren't confident out here, right? So... Part of making the first impression, right? When you meet somebody, you got those three seconds. And how can, how can you make that positive, lasting impression? First off, if you want to make a good impression, smile. Plain and simple, smile. I trained, I, I was in sales for a really long time. I trained a lot of people. And the, the, the easiest thing you could do to make people like you, smile. It don't even matter if your smile is fucked up. Just Get this, or or hit them with one of them elementary school smile. You know, what I'm saying? nah, I don't do that. I'm just playing. But smile, you know what I'm saying? It, it makes people feel that you're more inviting, more welcoming, right? So if you can make somebody, if you can invoke somebody feeling that, that's gonna have a positive, lasting impression on them, right? Smiling and confidence, two major things, right? So. But you really have to be on your game when you meet somebody for the first time, male or female, because in them three seconds, they sizing you up, seeing what type of person you are, if they want to continue to deal with you. So if you want, if you like somebody, and you want to continue your interaction with them, you better have a smile on your face. You better be confident, right? 
And you got to know how to use your, your non-verbal communication skills. Like I say all the time on this channel, body language is key, right? You have to learn how to use body language to benefit you. You have to learn how to read it, use it, and understand it. I know I said read it, but reading and understanding is two different things. So once you learn how to master your body language, like mirroring and stuff. Oh, we about to go deep now. Nah, nah, we're going to go deep, right? So there's a thing that I used to teach all the people that I trained in sales called rapport, rapport building, right? So people think like rapport building is, oh, like what you do yesterday and how's the weather? Nah, that's not rapport building. Rapport building is talking to somebody and then y'all becoming from this to this, right? Building a relationship with somebody from an initial interaction to making them accept you. How do you do it? Through body language. So if somebody's sitting with their arms folded and you come up with your arms folded, it's going to be an uncomfortable conversation. Why? Because your bodies, both of your bodies are closed off. So one of the things I used to teach when I was training salespeople, if somebody's got their arms crossed, you start with your arms crossed and then you open them up. I don't care how many times you got to do it, start doing this. Until you can get them to uncross their arms because eventually they will uncross their arms, right? Now, the next thing you got to do is mirror. Mirroring is huge, right? That's a secret weapon, right? A secret weapon that people don't know. But we do it on a subconscious level when we don't even know it. When you like somebody, we try to emulate that person. Whether we know it or not, we try to emulate them. So we'll sit like them, right? If they're sitting, lay across, you know what I'm saying? Or like this. You'll find yourself like this. If you like that person, you don't even know that you're doing it. You don't. We we do a lot of stuff subconsciously. We don't know if we even do it, right? Just like when you lie, your body tell the truth. <laughs> we don't know that we do it. But if you learn how to read these things, I'm telling you, man, it ain't going to be a person that you're not able to talk to. Learn how to master your body language. And how to move with confidence. It's going to change your life. Not just in the dating atmosphere. But in your professional atmosphere. Because here's what. When you're confident. People are attracted to that. They, they trust you. Because they feel if you. If you are able to trust yourself enough. To present yourself this way in the world. Then I should trust you too. Because. Let me tell you a secret. It's a lot of people with low self-esteem and they ain't got the confidence. So if you're able to do it and build your confidence up, you ain't going to have no problem with attracting people and making a good first impression, right? If somebody's telling you a story, how much of the words are you actually paying attention to, right? You're not really paying attention too much to somebody's words. You're paying attention to how their body language is. So you got... 10%, 10% is words. The rest is tonality, the pitch and speed of how you speak, and then the other rest, the, the bigger portion, is your body language. You shrunken in when you're talking to people? Are you making yourself wide? Taking up a lot of space. When you sit down, do you sit in the middle of the bench or do you sit at the end, right? People that sit at the in the middle of the bench in a park, this is a secret. They don't want to be bothered. They want to be by themselves. But if you see somebody sitting on the bench at the end, they're open to communications. That's the thing about reading body language and understanding body language. First things I covered was the confidence. In the three seconds that you got when you meet somebody. So you got three seconds 
from when you meet somebody that they are going to either write you off or explore further, right? And then I showed you how to start garnering a good first impression by introducing yourself with a smile, with positive and confident body language. And the next one is going to be authenticity, right? Because I know we want, per especially if you like that person, you really want that person to be down with you. So you try a little bit harder, right? But it comes across as unauthentic. It comes across as fake. It comes across as like you're doing too much. So you have to learn the balance between uh, doing too much and just, first off, just be you, Right? Now, if you have certain personality traits that makes you makes it harsh around, makes you a little harsh around the edges, then you have to work a little bit harder and you have to consciously know that you have these issues. So, like you start off with a smile, you be warm and inviting, you have confident personality and body language and you have to be authentic. Don't be fake. Just be you. Just keep it 100. Because you really want people to like you for you in the first place. If you if you're putting on a persona, they're not gonna like you. It's gonna be you're gonna see through it real quick, right? So uh you got the next thing that's called a halo effect. And so that means that you can't do no wrong. If you're an attractive person, we done seen it. Pretty woman kill somebody. She get probation. Ugly person kills somebody. They put them under the jail. It happens. That's called the halo effect, right? So if you're an attractor, you can use that to your advantage. That's a, that's a feather in your cap. Feather in your cap that you use to your advantage, right? So use it. If you know you're pretty, use it. It's going to help you make a lasting impression. Uh, lasting uh, first impression, right? Now, what happens to... A lot of people, when you're out here, there's people from everywhere, right? Everywhere around the world. And you tend to find that places with bigger populations, more crowded places, they tend to crowd in on the space. So if you're from like like Asia or India, New York, I, yeah, like I said, New York. Um, somewhere where it's real crowded, where they're not used to having the three feet rule, give that person some space. Give them three feet. Give them the bubble. It's a three foot bubble that you got to keep around, right? And that's going to make somebody feel comfortable. One of the things I used to do when I was selling, I used to do door to door. Yeah, it's, it's brutal, but I made a killing. To make somebody comfortable, you got to give them their personal space. So I would knock on the door, doo, 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 and I'd step off the porch. So that way, they don't feel threatened. Because you don't know who's on the other side of the door. It could be a little old lady. And then if you're an average size dude, you're 5'9", and she's 4'11", 4'10", you're towering over her. You're scaring her. So if you back up and you give somebody their personal space, it helps them be more comfortable with you. Their conscious guard is lowering down. There's things that we got to do on a subconscious level to make people like us. You're speaking with people, give them three feet. Just imagine a three-foot circle around the person so that they're more comfortable. And if you have a hard time judging, distance three feet is roughly where you got to lean into a handshake. All right? I said earlier. It's hard to come back from a bad first impression, right? It's very, very hard to come back from a bad first impression. But there's one way that you can, right? It's a thing called the recency effect. The recency effect is the last thing on the last note that you leave somebody, right? Like, so a lot of comedians like to leave their set with their best joke. Because it doesn't matter if they said a bunch of bullshit all the way up until the last joke. If the last joke was fucking hilarious, that's what the people going to remember. It's called the recency, or th recency effect. So if you notice that you done kicked off with uh, pretty shit 
introduction of yourself, then you fucked it up. You still can save it, but it's gonna be hard, man. One of the things that you could do is make somebody laugh. If you're a funny person, man, if you're naturally funny, you should be using that to your advantage. Because people that are naturally funny have a way. If if you can make somebody laugh, you can lower their conscious guard. We have a conscious guard blocking the bullshit every day. Every day. If you can get past that conscious guard, you can get people to do stuff for you that you never thought of. But you have to be able to get past the conscious guard. One, making them laugh. You know what I'm saying? Two, body language. Open their body language up. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're doing a public speaking... Tell them to uncross their arms, uncross the legs, shake it out, get loose. You know what I'm saying? It does a lot, man. It, uh, it's psychological, man. It's really psychological. That's it, man. That's those tips to making a lasting first impression. With that, we're going to jump 